the art of weaving that s helped me to connect to the my past generation like my like my grandmother and my great grandmother because our family have six generation of the weaver. Bonsu's art form grew out of her life. She grew up on a silk farm, and uh, so she started spinning silk and. And then she learned how to weave and and to dye the silk. She's a master weaver and dyer um, and spinner of all all kinds. I have been weaving for 53 years. I start to learn when I was nine years old. Bonsu, of course, comes from a very rich weaving tradition of the. Uh, Southeast Asia. It's, it's amazing how many uh, techniques uh, that are really go back probably thousands of years are still alive and well in Thailand, in Laos, in Cambodia. Lao weaving is very important in our culture because we use the weaving cloth fabric every day. Go to school, the younger wear and for the ceremonial, like a uh, uh, wedding dress. And for ritual, sometimes we use uh, like bird and dead. Bonsu's work is quite remarkable. It is incredibly technically complex. Some of the most complex weaving forms that there are is what she's doing with her work, the ikat and the brocade. My mother learned only, she liked it, specialized on the, the e-cut of Thai dye. But my grandmother, I studied with her, she specialized on the brocade and discontinuous. So for me, I learned both. What she's accomplished in her life as a weaver is quite phenomenal. She's absolutely prolific. Weaving with silk thread takes forever. For the discontinue, one day I can do only inch or in and a half per day, eight hours. But for the e cut even harder. Eight months to finish the piece. Because the tiny thread, I tie it and dye it, untie it. She does it all the time. She's never stopped since she had to flee her country. Um, and so I think that that says a lot about her character and her uh, ability to stay with her art form. I freed Lao in the midst of 1970. Due to the war, Vietnam War, I left behind everything, even my daughter. I feel that if, if I die, I die, only, only me die, my daughter's supposed to be alive. One of the amazing stories about Bon Su is when um, she was in the refugee camp. I thought about, yeah, how, or what supposed to do in here and how to survive because uh, 10,000 people, small food, lack of good water to drink. One thing that I had with me is uh, uh, my weaving skill. She taught other women how to weave so that they could have enough money to feed their children. And we build the school. I asked the young girl and the woman who want to know the weaving, come together to do something that we want to do in here so we can live with dignity, the sense of pride. She also has gone back to Laos several times and has worked with women there, bringing them supplies and then taking their finished product back here and selling to the Lao community. And so there she's sort of accomplishing two things. She's helping the people from her homeland and then she's keeping her culture alive here in this country. If we don't have the, the art of Lao, something, not only the weaving, but other things too. But for me, I do the weaving. I like my weaving stay alive in here. 
her daughter Lada has Balao dance troupe. They all wear the traditional hand-woven garments, which are just stunning. And it really, I think, helps them all identify with their roots, their culture, and sort of holds the whole community together. For me, I am the one who try to save the culture, to save the tradition, the beauty of uh, Lao weaving art. I think the impact of Bon Su's projects to publish two books, one on the traditional Lao weaving and one on how to weave Lao patterns, etc., will be very important for the Lao community and for the weaving community. Um, as far as I know, she's the only one that holds that knowledge, and without her, um, it can't be done. We can connect to our ancestor, our great-grandmother, by looking the pattern, the weaving. But if we don't have it, the, the, the culture is lost.